so I, I actually I suppose with that um, we can. I suppose if we're not going to have a red dragon in a red dragon lair, we're going to have a volcano. A volcano. And, and Grimhilda von Holder. Grimhilda is going to be the red dragon. Let's watch. I mean, the question is, are we going to have, have a silver layers. dragon? She's gonna have layer actions. Just watch. I mean, she's a she's a female. That's not really her layer. Yeah, mm, she's gonna get her head smashed into the brimstone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Repeatedly, until the twitching stops. Uh, I'm yep. gonna give some quick shout outs here because again, I'm I'm sorry to both my crew and all of you in the audience for the late start tonight, but due to the uh, due to my very close call with a uh, scam going around on Discord right now. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I made everyone aware of it so that y'all don't fall for it. I didn't. Don't. Th so if I message you, I'm not compromised. Uh, but Remember. I'll let you all know about that. So a quick shout out to Gathering of Nerds, where you can uh, find Lethality Complex. Uh, a yes. shout out to Coffee Cat Presents, uh, running Vampire the Masquerade, and sometimes a yeah. Caffeine Fix, which is an art stream. Sometimes. They're rare these days, but sometimes. Yeah, well, hey, I mean, you've been a very gracious uh, substitute teacher on the Tuesdays where uh, we might not have been able to, to get together. Um, no. Good okay. Lord. Don't give Maddie plus one. Maddie, Maddie doesn't need help. He doesn't need it. He's got a volcano. <laughs> he has a volcano and an exceptionally powerful fiend lock who has what's coming to her. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give a quick shout out to... Um, uh, Cage Dark Wolf over here, who does have a channel. I'll eventually stream. And will eventually stream again one day. Um, we'll you know, I was just talking when about Josh. It's not on getting, Maddie's uh, channel. Getting our Maddie, she is often on Maddie's yes. channel. Hmm. <laughs> Shout out Maddie Morgs Presents. Or no, Maddie Morgs Presents. <laughs> it's just, that, that was <laughs> the whole title what, of this show. Uh, that's what we used to be. Now we're Chroma Company. But now, yeah. Da -da -da, we're the Chroma Company. Y'all see that awesome art by time you... <laughs> It's about time you <laughs> you adopted that moniker as the title of the show. Yeah, well, I, I, I've I've been doing that for a while now, especially uh, especially with this awesome uh, this awesome lobby art here. Like, there's Look, many more Chroma Company, but I've I've been like, yeah, this is this is the Chroma Company here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna need to go ahead and uh, even eventually compose also proper theme song. Uh, hey, uh. if if you want to have something, uh, if you want to add more music, I'm absolutely open to that. We have our lobby. We have our lo custom lobby music. And we have our, our or I'm sorry. Well, yeah, our lobby and our break screen have custom songs. And if you want a theme song, like y'all are a bunch of Sentai getting ready to fight, uh, I'm all for it. Damn right we're a, <laughs> damn right we're a pub. We're a bunch of Sentai as the as the resident Sentai nerd. <laughs> yep, we're super like sentai. you like. Like or Sailor Senshi, your cha your choice. Yes, yeah, yeah, Sailor Senshi. Well, especially well, Norla. <laughs> Norla is definitely Sailor Senshi. <laughs> Look, Cipher had right to Cipher had extent, ten yes. Cipher had Tensus transformation. You better believe. You better believe that was a <laughs> goddamn henshin sequence. That was a yeah. goddamn henshin sequence. It's it's true. It's true. Uh, now before we get to before we get to the big fight, there is some stuff that we need to resolve in the background. And, yes. Uh, let's go down the list of things. Uh, and, and this is in partial also recap of what happened during our last session that's going to lead up to here. Um, there was a very tender moment that was built up uh, between Norali and Mordecai. Um, because Norlai <laughs> was a, a thieving little thief who seemed to only make things worse by trying to make them better. Um, but that was eventually resolved. Oh, I wonder resolved. where that was. <laughs> that was eventually resolved, and uh, it turned into a bit of a, a learning slash moral lesson and a dear confession of, uh, of uh, appreciation and love from Norlai to Mordecai as, uh, as a big brother. Um, which for all of you out there is even more meaningful because Norlai has a biological big brother. But uh, who is a who is a twisted, shattered rack? I wasn't gonna say it, so I'm glad someone else did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, given that they're married now, does that does that make Selene your big sister, Norlai? Oh, 
does that, does, um, does, does, does that make Considering previous her... actions, no. Does that, does that make her your own Nason? <laughs> <laughs> and I said that like that on purpose. And for, th for those in the know, you know why. There... <laughs> I have an Oni-chan. I don't need an Oni-san. There, there was a uh, there was a marriage prior even to this. Everyone, just so you know, uh, mm -hmm. so the uh, uh, Celine and Mordecai uh, are freshly hitched. Uh, so congrats to them. Uh, now, in a part of the exchange and whatnot, uh, Mordecai was uh, was sort of he stepped out into the storm uh, and was just opening himself up to the rain and the wind, and uh, as this is a part of his spiritual revitalization. And as a part of this, you had cast the commune ritual, and yep. you wanted to learn the name of the land. Now, you had yes. another question that was answered to you because a newspaper just sort of, like, came flapping by and, f like, flapped you in the face with a yes. But mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to provide I don't know. you... Is that really what it meant? <laughs> was that really a yes? The Illuminati. Mordecai's a little less skeptical at this point. <clears throat> uh, but we actually used to have be a very big skeptic. Uh, for you to solve the riddle of the name of the land, and we're Ooh. going to do it in the spirit of uh, uh, of how this how this place came to be. Uh, now, talking in the meta, because for, for those of you who are here, I imagine most, if not all, of you know that we do a workshop usually Wednesday. Saturday, and that's how this whole adventure setting and and the boss that they're going to fight and everyone was created. Mm -hmm. But there is a method that we can actually create randomized names. And so, Mordecai, mm -hmm. I'm going to put you through this process mm -hmm. and you are going to have to decipher what the name of the land is. Uh, okay. So what I need you to do to begin this process is to roll a 1d8 plus 2. 1d8 plus 2. Ooh. 7. Alright. So this name is going to be 7 letters long. Uh, now, what I would okay. like you to do... Um, I would like you to roll 7 d6s. All right, so we have a what? Uh, one, two, three, four. We have four even numbers and three odd numbers. Okay, so now what we're going to do uh, for the... Uh, let's see. Uh, the odd numbers is a consonant. The evens are vowels. So I need you to roll... Four D sixes for our vowels. Okay. All right. So we have a U, an I, an A, and a U. Okay. So these are our four letters for our vowels. Now, for our three consonants, I need you to roll 3d20. 3d20. Uh, one, two, three. Eighteen, twenty, and seventeen. Oh, I'm burning up all your good rolls now. Suck. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So we that's have a B, a, w, and a Z. Uh, 17, mm -hmm. 18, and 20. We have a V, a W, and a Z. So now, what you can do, this is your mysterious response. You have received the letters of the name of the land, and combining uh, you, so you have, let's put this in order, you have an A, I, U, and U, and then you have a uh, V, W, and Z. In any, in any way you want, you can arrange those letters, and that is the name of the land. That was uh, revealed to you, and yes, apparently, apparently there is an uwu in there. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, not doing that. That that is that is my declaration. Uh, Avizu. 
And uh, for any of you out in the audience as well, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this this uh, name generation mechanic as we've generated the letters for the name. And now it's up to our cleric who is seeking the name of the land that has been long forgotten uh, and now freshly whispered and is coming into an understanding. Uh, but our, our cleric Mordecai here uh, can be the first in perhaps a very long time to give a name uh, to the land itself, to the, the spirit, the, the divinity um, of the firmament upon which they've lived all this time. Please give me huggy wuggies. Oh, no. <laughs> the land just wants a hug. <laughs> Hey, you can you oh, can ask uh, Abizuwu. What's this? Abizuwu, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd have to think about that. Um. Oh, I like that third one you put. You you posed though. Ah, Zuluvia. And as yeah, you're heading to wait. this volcano, I see you, you've noticed it's bulgy bulgy. So. Oh Jesus! Great. Jesus! 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 Christ, Maddie. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. Um, sorry, I just bought myself dial a little inside. Uh, uh, <laughs> kidding, of no, Tom in chat says, Uwoovzia. And then we've had an Ivoovoos or a Zuwoovia. 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 That's actually, that's actually a really solid name. Because you could get kids like it. The way that the syllables come together means you don't get like a proper uwu out of it. And I and will it say, sounds all right. this is a fantasy setting, so you are of course allowed to use hyphens and apostrophes if you want uh, to uh, include that in a name, as that it's a time-honored tradition among many uh, fantasy tales. Yeah, like my character Salvar Karas Hellstorm, that has he has three fucking apostrophes in his name. <laughs> So if any of those stand out to you, uh, uh Z I, I, I like Zuubia. Zuubia. But we have let the Zubia. land itself speak. Yeah, the land has spoken. And the land's a weeb. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> look look, I've just got this box of questionable DVDs that I'm gonna drop into a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> what, happens to them, what happens to them after that is none of my concern. Uh, now, while... Uh, Let me see if I can find one of them. While, while the crew is uh, divining the mystery of the name of the land, let's go over to our divination wizard, uh, who wanted to say goodbye to Gaspard as well before uh, taking off to go meet with Selter and the Repentless. Um, bright... It's true. Are there is there anything else that needs to be resolved before we start? Um the loose ends that were carried from last time that I had on the short list was name of the land, saying goodbye to Gaspard, and uh then there's a possible Selter slash Selene meetup on the ship. Okay. Give me two seconds. I kind of like the name Zuiva. Zuiva? Yeah, that's the that's the second one I posted. Don't you mean Zuiva? No. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. No. <laughs> no. There's too many Uru's already in this goddamn game. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Zuviwa. Okay. Zuviwa. Oh. There you go. <laughs> so we've all. <laughs> all right. So it looks like the name of the land. I'm, I'm so partial to Zuruvia. Yeah, I think I think I'll call it Zuruvia. It's the Nomis pronunciation. Okay. Yeah. There, there's some regional, you know, dialects apparently that will. Come back, so. She's foreseen the corruption of the name. 
it, it's it's funny because uh, it, it's funny because that's probably also the Elvish pronunciation of the name too. <laughs> Uh, and the fact that there's a V in here is beautiful cannon fodder for all my Shadowheart uh, people who might come to convert to the religion as well. Mm -hmm. Zuiwa! <laughs> Hail War, Zuiwa! Yep. <laughs> yep. We are your we royal followers. <laughs> we started this. We started all of this. <laughs> the wind is due a weckoning. They sound like dots. <laughs> they sound like you hear of which dots. <laughs> Don't listen to us on Believer's Coffee. You gotta keep the faith. You gotta keep it strong. <laughs> You're carrying that weight right now, but you, you can you can turn hearts. Um, all right, so... <laughs> I just punched myself in the chest accidentally, and that hurt. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I put myself on the line for you guys. You guys out there in the audience. Um, Lethality complex, everyone. <laughs> there's not even any other there's not even any other way to describe it I punched myself in the chest he thought it complex everyone I'm saving the world <laughs> oh god oh, God's no. this game um yeah. uh, yes, uh so uh, let, let, let Brad say goodbye to guests. Yeah, before, I, and I, uh, I don't know how involved you want it to be, with. or if you're just like, well, I want it noted that I did. And that's fine. But if you want to exchange more meaningful words, you can as well. But that was a loose end to tie up before we proceed. Yeah, um, we can we can do things more meaningfully. We can do things what? I'm sorry. More meaningfully. Oh sure. Okay. Uh, then we'll get you to, uh, there you go. We'll get you to Gaspard. Uh, and, I mean, if, if anyone else wants to say goodbye too, otherwise this is, a, I guess, a bright solo. If you want it to be a bright solo, it could be a bright solo. Which is, which is not at all like a drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, I imagine we probably said uh, our, our goodbyes to Gaspard, but Brad, Brad, Brad has some extra to say, so we're leaving, we're leaving, we're leaving her there to say to say her extra bit alone with Gaspard. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Uh, I I unfortunately don't have a token for him, so we'll just have to pretend that you're here in his personal workshop uh, down by the harbor, um, and. And speak to him. Yeah, that's okay. I can. I have many tokens if you want. Yeah. Um. So we have to go now, and um, I just want to make sure that that there's no weirdness left over. I know we've had a lot of of things going wrong recently, and I don't. I don't want to go off and die. And have that be the last memory. So, instead, I wanted to say goodbye properly. Does that make sense? Right, that does make sense. Uh, that's very embiggened of you. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> that's not... That's not something those would say. <laughs> not politely. <laughs> well, um, so I I made you a thing. It's not not very important, but I made it myself. Oh wait, it's you, a little... you mean you mean you're serious? Like you're actually going to be putting yourself in mortal danger? Yeah, yeah, we do it all the time, actually. Um, but. It's, it's a little, um, uh, oh, I don't have it. 
You'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> my, uh, all right, my, I, I'll my, believe you. My, but... my prop comedy has failed for today. Um, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little folding paper box, and I made it myself. It's something that we that we practice in calligraphy school, um, and you can you can turn it inside out, and it's. It goes from being a box to being like a little piece of origami. So you can keep things in it, and then you can take them out, and when, you, when you're not using it as a box, then you can turn it inside out, and it looks like a little flowery thing. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I mean, I'll kindly... I have lots of things that I could put in there. I'll accept the gift, but... I mean, I... He, he looks at that, and I'd much rather, you know... You come back. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try. But, you know, you never really know for sure. Well, um... I've certainly said goodbye plenty of times. I guess this one's a little different. Um, I obviously, you know, don't die. Uh, what do I say? Uh, uh, things will continue to proceed apace. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's that's actually exactly what I wanted to hear. Oh, Whew. he kind of like flaps his collar <laughs> a bit to vent out the the warmth that had been building up. So, so uh, yeah. All right. I mean, that what what are you doing? Uh, do you need help? Not, not really. We're we're all going to a, a volcano. Um. And it might erupt with us in it, so that's always a problem with volcanoes. Um, oh, especially yeah. like, you know, like if there's an earthquake, just hypothetically speaking, if there's an earthquake and the volcano erupts, you know, we, we could all be buried under lava and or tephra. It's very important to distinguish those, especially when they're falling on you. You don't want to say the wrong thing. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, well... Uh, uh, hang, hang on, I'm sure I, uh, if you're going to give me a gift, I'm, I'm sure I could send along a, a gift of some kind for you as well. Uh, uh, he goes over to one of his chests and he begins to uh, saying all, all sorts of, like, they're all flippity flam, where's the he's rumble rumble like, going through things. Conveniently, like a cat outside goes rawr, uh, through all the, the tinkering and gnomish swearing as he's going through things to give to you impromptu. Uh. Uh, it might not be much, but, uh, uh, here, uh, he seems to be happily, like, he grasps, grasps something, turns around and, uh, just get, he gives it to you. Uh, and I need you to roll a, uh, D100 to determine what he gave you. Ah, you have a potion of greater healing. You're muted, by the way. See, this is why I come on video sometimes, so that people can tell me when I'm muted. Otherwise I can, otherwise I can say a whole thing and then I realize, oh, that never happened. <laughs> Alternate realities. Yeah. Good role playing for this They're really. It's really getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I I hide it well. <laughs> I I was wondering if we were rolling on the trinket table, but apparently not, so that's good. <laughs> and if he was gonna give me like a disembodied eye in a jar, that would be that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't maybe you could make use of the potion of greater healing. Yeah, this is great. I'll I'll use this to keep from dying. So 
<laughs> that'll make it more likely that I'll come back. So I, I appreciate that. And hopefully I won't need it, but we'll see. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, you know, that uh, that stuff's pretty rare nowadays, uh, especially after the earthquake that hit town here. Uh, I kind of squirreled that one away in case there was an accident on the construction site. Fortunately, with the Kyberners, we haven't really Many had to use those, so in the face of chaos, that's a really precious thing one. that you got there. And I'm, 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 I hope, well, I hope that it serves you well, but also by saying that, that means that you're in trouble and probably dying. So, yeah. I actually don't want you to use the gift that I gave you. If that makes sense. It does. That makes perfect sense. All right, such please a good never use it. that gift. <laughs> okay, unless I die. Unless you're dying, yes. Yeah. But if so, you are, it's not because I wished it. Here's the thing. There's a there's a funny a funny situation here. And it it has to do with in case neither Norline nor I comes back. We're going to need someone to run the orphanage and I don't want it to end up being run by the church. I know we've worked with them and they've they've bought some some add-ons and, and whatever. Um but we we don't want them to take it over. Not completely. So if, if neither nor I nor I comes back, uh, I mean you can run it if you want, if you have the time and, and enthusiasm for it. But if you don't Find someone who's not affiliated with the church around it. Oh, um, well, I, I suppose that I could set myself up to do so. Uh, after the construction's done, the Kyberners are going to need something to do. I could probably just put, like, a big cage on the back and hook them up with kind of like a, a net or something and just send them out to go uh, harvest orphans for the orphanarium. Well, it's about more than catching the orphans. <laughs> There's, there's more there's more to running the orphanarium than catching orphans and putting them in it. it oh. It's a lot of... Well, yeah, they need fed, too. Yeah, you, you have to feed them. I think that's that's a thing that you have to do with kids. Um, but also... I mean, there's a lot of, like, making sure that everybody's okay and making sure that they get to go to school and making sure that, you know, that there's not too much bullying going on or, or that nobody gets hurt or... It's just a lot of looking after things. Oh, of course. Yeah. Education's number one. Right? You and I are very educated people, and I'd want to make sure that gets passed on to them. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, um, that's all. So, I have to go soon. I don't want to miss my, my boat. Yeah, well, uh, uh, well, right, uh, tell you what, um, uh, what, what, what do you say, what do you say if I just kind of do this? Can I, can I take a step forward? Can I? Yeah, of course you can, you can step forward. Okay. <laughs> kind of, it's pat okay. you on the back as he gives you a hug. Okay, we can have a, we can have a nice hug. It, it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be like a two guys hug, it could be a, Nice close hug. Oh, uh, <laughs> right. I, I tell you, it's just it's been so long, and well, you know, there's just not a lot of, not a lot of us left, and I've yeah, been trying yeah. to deal with a lot of things through, you know, detachment or distraction or even humor. Uh, and I'll I'll tell you, in the months that we've been working together, you've been a real bright spot in my life, so I appreciate it. He gives you a, a uh, he gives you a, a great big squeeze, not just like the casual like pat on the back. Okay. Yeah, we can have a nice squeeze, squeeze. Okay. Well, yep. Please. Everything everything will be in uh, uh, in the works, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bye. Hopefully. Um, I guess this is where we say, okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, okay, thanks, bye. Okay, thanks, bye, Bright. Okay, thanks, bye, Gaspard. All right. Oh! You've 
said your case thanks buys. <clears throat> you have something hopefully you'll never have to use. And it was from here. Mm -hmm. You all ended up making your way from Old Port to a remote beach. Uh, where you were going to be uh, where you were going to be picked up and the repentless showed up at the right point at the right time it came in low over the water big splash with a wave riding in front of it and as it came up to the shore it opened its great mouth uh, in the front and rolled out the red carpet for you all uh, with its tongue and you stepped inside uh, and inside the uh, the great uh, I wouldn't call it a living ship necessarily it has it has organic uh, material so it's like at least a bio ship of some kind um, at least in parts uh, but you you are inside the mouth closes and you begin your travel from this uh, remote shore in Mesomasca across the receding inner sea towards the volcano where Grim Helder was apparently planning to open the gates of Moiho uh, here to empower herself to fight against Shonuroth to do perhaps that and more it's a find out when you get there sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, Celine, as this as the repentless uh, does, you know, roll up. Is there anything uh, that you wish to say or do? Uh, it's just the ship. There's no sign of anyone else. Celine is kind of looking at it. since I've seen that ship. Even in its new form, it's still... creepy. Recognizable. Mm. You, sh you should be... you should be nicer to your engineering marvels, Modica. I didn't do much of this. I got it started. The rest was on Selter. Selter? Selter. Selter's alive. Oh, didn't we fill you in on this? Sort of? I thought we told you about her. No? To be fair, we had some we had much more important things going on. That's fair. Like trying not to die to a to, to an undead invasion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't 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 tell her that you think that's mine. Why ran a mad? Well, she's around here somewhere. I'm sure. She kind of is part of the ship, and she kind of visits. She occasionally manifests when she wants to. She'll maybe have some crass words for you if she decides she is ballsy enough to do it. I guess. Oh, I don't doubt that. I, I think you forget what happened. She hates you. Yeah, like, quite a bit. When we yeah. saw her last, she said that we told her that you were dead, and now you're alive. And she's... She was glad you were dead. Um, I mean, she she kind of knows that uh, you came back for a while, and that you also disappeared for a while, so she'll probably be extra mad. <sighs> Pitfalls of being in just semi-immortal. Yeah. Traditionally immortal. 
timeless. That's that. That's what I was looking for. Timeless. Mm. Yeah, it's a weird thing. She's kind of oh, in a weird. Oh, oh, you, oh, you don't say. I live it. Well, yeah. She's also kind of a hodgepodge, pseudo immortal kind of thing. Right. Well, we may as well get this over with then. Uh, yep. Celine, I, I'd like you to roll a. I'd like you to roll a. An insight, please. Here's that. I'm good at this. Oh, oh, that's, none a, of the, that's a red none, none, none of the moment I've done. I'm a plus ten. The other one was a four. Um. All right. Um. It's not covered to be the, at the moment. The place is definitely giving you a weird vibe. Um. But I mean, it looks alive. It's. Maybe it's just kind of an overwhelming thing, or there's a little bit of a, uh, if not a fear, a concern for what might happen uh, as you've, well, you're back here, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, all right. So you enter the, you enter the repentless, the mouth closes and it begins to take off. Um, it does look a little bit different, uh, even from those who have seen it before, more recently, uh, because it, it has been it has been eating, and it, it has been going through a... Uh, it, it seems to just undergo a, a slow kind of transformation as it uh, eats different things, and it's rearranged over time by Selter. Um, it's mostly the same, but there's some other, there's been some modifications to it. Um, but yes, uh, you're inside, you make your way through, and you are aboard the ship. Now, being aboard the ship, we'll see if Selter approaches any of you. Um, though I believe there was, uh, there was, uh, someone who specifically was seeking out Selter. Uh, and I, I will say, all of you... Uh, after you've boarded the Repentless, we'll meet DJ. He is on board the ship. And after you've made your way up the tongue, kind of through its gullet, and you reach the top deck, um, he'll be there waiting for you and show you uh, to your rooms. Because you all have very nice plush rooms. Um, uh, that there's that. Do Mordecai and Selene have separate rooms? Uh, that's up to them. Well, uh -oh. I mean, I know that like, they're not going to be sleeping in separate rooms, but were they prepared separate rooms? Uh, the rooms can be prepared however. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, just, let's just say Salt is like, oh, yeah, prepare five rooms. Maybe prepared one expecting, expecting Scythe to be back. Mm. So, four rooms then. Scythe is running experiments in the, uh, in the Shurinaruth place. Uh, well, the, I don't know where my interior slide is, I won't, I won't spend a whole lot of time trying to dig around for it, but anyway, the, uh, uh, there's a, a very stately, uh, very Shadahar-influenced wealthy manor that's at the rear of the ship, and, uh, I mean, obviously, Lethality, you've been through it, so you can reconjure yeah. the imagery of uh, the art and the tapestries and the carpets and everything, so you can filter that through Selene as she, you know, tours the place. Toward me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Norali, I believe you had some business, correct? Mm hmm Um, okay. I had something I wanted to trade. DJ will uh, 
DJ will, uh, after making sure that you're set up in your room, uh, will tell you that you can come to the, you can come to the treasury then, as you have received uh, approval for a trade with Selter. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hope that's what you care for, Jesus. Yeah. DJ meets you, uh, and you uh, you hand over the item. Uh, he tells you that uh, he. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm trading away my gloves with thievery. Um, I, I don't really need them anymore. Well, I'll appraise them and see what I can do for you. Thank you, DJ. Uh, do you have any particular notes as to why you don't wish to have these anymore? Do they require repair? Um, no, they're fine. I'm, I just, uh, I haven't needed them, really, and... Last time I used them, um, well, it worked, but it didn't work. Um, so they're they're good. It's just uh, things that don't include the gloves went wrong. Hmm. So uh, I don't need them anymore. I'll see what I can do for you. He turns and leaves, and you're left in the in the uh, treasury. Uh, which, by the way, uh, is where uh, Snowball is. Because if you remember, that's where uh, your, uh, the other animals were kept. Yeah. Um, as a note, I don't I don't remember if I stated, uh, but I left Yori with uh, Kieran. Okay. Hi, Snowball. How are you? Have a treat. Um, as you were uh, there uh, associating yourself with Snowball um, no sound behind you or anything but there is a uh, a little bit of a chill up your spine and um, the f a familiar voice of Selter, and she's apparently manifested behind you, uh, just like very like creepily close, like kind of like hunched over your shoulder, looking past you. Like you just see the black snout coming over your shoulder, uh, and then the, the, the mouth Hi, opens, and there's a there's like a green glow inside. Hi, Selter. You know I've been on here a few times. So you don't need to keep sneaking up on me. Oh, of course I do. How else are you supposed to keep yourself sharp? Uh, I guess that's a good reason. Snowball looks good. I should hope so. I'd argue he's pampered more than I am here. Now, about these gloves that DJ has brought to me. Mm-hmm. I could certainly take them off your hands. That's a joke, sugar. You should laugh. <laughs> yeah, oh, because I already took them off my hands. <laughs> Thank you. But I was wondering. I noticed that there is a particular other person who came aboard my ship with Mordecai. Yeah. Yeah, that, um... So, I remember last time I was here, and I said that Mordecai disappeared, and Celine disappeared. Well, they reappeared, um, like, a few days ago. Um, or at least that's when we got in contact with them a few days ago. Uh, like, probably like a week ago. Um... So we picked them up, and uh, they uh, we finally got Mordecai to visit his mom. His parents are divorced now. That's interesting. Um, 
but uh, they uh, they got married, and then now we're uh, they're here together. And he don't sli- like Selene that much, but uh, we need to fight a volcano, so we kind of need her. That's beautiful and all, but nor will I. What mm-hmm. is Selene? What is she? What? What is Selene? Um, that's a good question. She don't taste right. Yeah, she's... I think Mordecai can answer this better, or probably Selene would answer this better, but she's, like, not Selene. Like, because, like, her bone, her bones are, like, not in her. Those are someone else's bones, but she says the rest is hers, but I don't really... I don't know about all that, but the bones aren't hers. I can tell. And she she does a very deft, like almost like a wispy twirl around from behind you uh, to in front of you, standing beside uh, uh, standing beside the uh, like the fake tree that Snowballs is sort of hanging out on. Um, I'm just dying to know. Is she... Is she alive? Can I hurt her? More specifically, darling. Oh, um... Alive, debatable, hurt... Possible. Not recommended, though, because Mordecai would get really upset and we have to fight a volcano, so we kind of need Selene right now. I don't suppose there's anything else that you can tell little old me. Um, you know, to catch uh, up to, she does another sort of like smoky swirl around you, um, and gives you like a the, under the chin like a delightful little like finger. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, what haven't you learned yet? Uh, unfortunately, we still don't know anything about Cipher. Um, I cut you up on Selene and Mordecai. Um. We're going to a volcano to fight um, Grim, uh, Grim Va- uh, Grimhilder, Grimhilder Von L.A. Um, and probably my brother might be there. Um, uh, have I told you about Heron? I don't believe so. Oh, Heron's my boyfriend. I met him at a gala, and he's really cute. And he's watching Yori, that's why I didn't bring Yori. Because, How much uh, is he worth, uh, Sugar? I don't care about his looks. Is he rich? Um, yeah, a little bit. He's a silver smith. Silver? Well, you gotta start somewhere, I suppose. Does he give you gifts at all? Yeah, sometimes. I, I mean, I, I don't mind getting gifts or not, because I just like spending time with him really. The gifts are nice too. Well, that sounds like a good start. If it means anything to you, dear Norlai, you can bring them. You can bring them on by the repentless, and I'll make sure to have a good talk with him about how to treat them right. Uh, well, Mordecai, are you talking to him about that? And you know, he, he does treat me nice, so I, I don't think he really needs it. But, you know, if he ever wants to go out sometime, like, uh, you know, sail to a different country for a bit, for a vacation or something, you know, we can go with you. Nor lie. Mordecai's taste in men is, well, you don't see him with him anymore, do you? I don't think he knows what to look for. Which him are you referring to? Oh, didn't you know? And uh, she'll get into a little bit of gossip about his uh, former lover uh, from the circus. Oh, that one. Uh, yeah, he was. Um. 
but uh, you spend some time and she she discusses the uh, uh, her approach to dating uh, the things to look for in someone else um, you know strength wealth they taste good <laughs> um, uh, but uh, at the end of your uh, at the end of your uh, time together here she thanks you for spilling the beans about things that have happened up to this point uh, because there is only so much that uh, there's only so much that DJ can tell her about uh, what what's been going on and uh, she will uh, she will kindly uh, trade your gloves for something else um And the thing that she will uh, trade you for here. Well, do you want money or do you want to go for a magic item? Uh, probably a magic item. Okay. you to roll a d100 and welcome raiders well we are generating up some treasure not those nerds thank you for coming over oh, to say not hi. those nerds oh no not the nerds oh no not allowed to have that item, so I need you to roll again, please. Why? Why can't I have that item? Because it's extra-dimensional space and that doesn't exist. Well, fine. Give me a better item. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, she gives you, in exchange for some uh, info in the gloves, She gives you a lantern of revealing. Ooh, how fun. While lit, this hooded lantern burns for six hours on one pint of oil, shedding bright light in a 30-foot radius and dim light for an additional 30. Invisible creatures and objects are visible as long as they're in the lantern's bright light. You can use an action to lower the hood, reducing the light to dim light in a five-foot radius. And she was kind Twenty. enough to even throw in two pints of lantern oil. Yeah. Because oh. she likes you and she gives you a boop on the nose. That actually kind of hurt for a second and you might actually have a drop of blood on the tip of your nose. Well, it'll be I hope that that comes in handy for you. Really nice. Thank you. You know, Norlai, I don't know why you want to stick with them. If you wanted to be a part of my crew, I think you've shown great promise. Well... You know, I'm I'm hoping to settle down because we're building an orphanarium and Huron's an old port, but yeah, you know, we gotta go fight the volcano and try to save my brother. Um but yeah. It would be fun it would be fun to go with you on cool adventures, but I think I'm getting close to done adventuring. When helping other people eventually leads you to disappointment, I want you to remember old Celta's words of wisdom. And the offer. Well, yeah, if, if anything goes wrong and I, I can't stand and look for it, I could always, I could always hang out with you. You're fun. 
I'd like to think so. And thank you for seeing that in me. It takes a rare person to understand my proclivities, my lifestyle. Anyway, I believe that you should go to your room. Mm -hmm. I got some things to prepare for. Not As really, but I. everyone else spends the mornings preparing, and I, I usually just like sit there and eat breakfast while while I wait for them. In the middle of your sentence, talking about breakfast, she just mm -hmm. she just disappears, leaving you in the treasury. No, uh, DJ will come to fetch you after a couple minutes of you just sort of. You've been like going off talking for a little bit, and then you were talking to oh. Snowball. So Snowball, how, how are you? <laughs> Wait, I have Sneaker Battle. The I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Snowball real quick. <laughs> you can talk with Snowball. Um, uh, roll a d20. Okay. I just had a lovely conversation. Sure. So, you have a conversation with Snowball who can tell you all about the the bugs and the vegetables that he's eaten. The Repentless makes its way across the land and the sea. It started here. On your eh, kind of short trip, you know, it arrived when the sun was setting to make sure that you all got uh, that you all got cover, and it's been plodding along through the night as you're getting closer and closer to the volcano. Um, as for well, Mordecai, you're there. Is that you know you and Celine are sharing a cabin? Mm -hmm. Uh, Celine, nothing, nothing happens to you directly, but weird things do occur while you are aboard. Um, for example, there's a really nice mirror in the, uh, in the bathroom of this place, of your cabin, and your cabin is just like a, a, a royal room. You know, four-poster bed, has nice silks, etc., etc. And while you're looking in the room, in, in the mirror, your face melts off. Just not your physical face. Oh, it's in, in your reflection, you just melt and you are gore and viscera and glistening bone. Sort of like you looked in the Ark of the Covenant style. Celine's probably standing in front of a mirror with a bemused look on her face because she would know exactly who's doing this. That'd be only one person who could do this. If you have something to say, say it. I never took you for a coward, Selta. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. No, she knows you're a coward, Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> Shot by. Yikes. Um, but yeah, just little things that would mess with you, Celine. Um, you know. Yeah, and Celine's like, and Cel Celine across the entire trip is going to be like, if you have something to say, say it. And Mordecai, you are, I mean, maybe you can imagine what's happening, but at the same time, you're not seeing the melted reflection. You're not seeing the bloody footprints left behind wherever Celine walks. Uh, you know, there's, so. And, and at some point, there's probably going to be a note that's like, look, if you're going to, if you're going to be a little bleep, be a little bleep, but don't be such a bleeping bleep about it. <laughs> 
maintaining PG-13. What are you on about? Seltzer is fucking with me. That's L1. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of anticipated she would do something. Yes, and I'd very much prefer that she come down- if she really has that much of an issue, that she can come down and talk to me about it. There's no need for all this... drama. You know? She lives on drama, don't you know? Yes, and if we don't get where we're going, she'll die on it too. Permanently this time, along with the rest of us. Still nothing. Celia's so kind of just looking around and waiting. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, the ship continues to hum along as the uh, as the sky grows dark. Uh, if you recall, at one point uh, there was a flash where the sky had turned orange for a brief moment. Uh, as you were approaching the volcano, but that uh, that sort of almost like a big signal beam up from the volcano into the sky above, kind of reminding you of the of the uh, hellish tower uh, that was being developed uh, back in Mesomasca. Um, but it it diminishes, and it is perhaps a sign that whatever is happening is happening. It's beginning to ramp up. I'm hoping we're not too late. Well, I suppose if we're going in, we're going in hot. <laughs> Literally? Yeah. Well, it is a volcano. It's true. Getting closer, the light now more consistently beams into the sky. And... Uh, with it, while there is a, a a heat wave that even from this distance just seems to blow uh, across the ship, um, you can also see that lightning is uh, just flashing and cracking through this energy beam and striking outwards from the volcano. And the lightning does look rather familiar, because you were at the source of where this was happening. It's Boyhoen lightning. And one such, uh, one such very large lightning bolt um, arcs out of the beam and right into the side of the Repentless. And the ship kind of gives a shudder. Um... Like muscles twitching and contracting, shudder. Um, and the ship veers away from the volcano as the as the lightning strikes uh, smaller ones after the first major one. But a couple random smaller lightning strikes seem to find various parts of the ship. And after you back off a distance, the lightning no longer seems to be attracted. Uh, that's not good. Nope. I mean, I'm fine with lightning, but you guys aren't fine with lightning, and the software is not fine with lightning. Yeah, I think the ship has the biggest problem. Yeah. Can you do, like, storm things to make the lightning go away? Um... I, I don't think I can make it go away. I'm better at making it go. You know, like, happen. Um, Can you add a way to that? Uh, no. Um. DJ approaches you all and informs you of the situation that it seems that Repentless, without suffering uh, more damage, as you can almost smell, like, cooked meat 
along with the smells of burning wood and the other substances that comprise the repentless. Um, like you can even hear some like sizzle pops along the outside of the hall. The repentless uh, can't seem to get closer uh, without the risk of either being burnt by this unnatural heat uh, or being struck by this lightning uh, as it uh, as it gets much closer. Well, I suppose we're on our own to make it make it that way. Wait, how how far are we right now then? Uh, I'm gonna say that you're about a mile off of the uh, off of the land, the edge of the the volcano here. Well, that's not too far. We can probably fly that ourselves. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Do we have the ability to fly? Well, I have uh, flight prepared. I, I, I would be I would be worried about using the the owls for this, because what if what if well, we I don't want to use like, the owls yet? Huh? Yeah, that I don't want to use the owls yet. But I can just fly. She, okay. she just floats up a bit. I I can do this. Oh. So. I guess yeah, that's you, you guys gotta figure it out. Me and Celine that, that need, need help flying then. Okay, well I have a spell. Mine only lasts a minute. I don't think I can travel a mile in a minute. Well, not with that attitude. But if you're dashing, you could. I mean, flying, you should be able to. Unless it's flying, you could have walking speed. If flying was my walking speed. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. No, that won't do it. You should practice speed. your flying. You should work out those those wing muscles. Unfortunately, mine 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 aren't good for flying. Let yeah. me see if I can do that with my staff. Um, no, I can only levitate. That's not as good. <laughs> okay. Well, if you levitate, and I can just push. <laughs> I, I can, I can, I can uh, just cast a higher level fly, it's fine. DJ clears his throat. <clears throat> yes. yes. I just so happen to know that there are some uh, unprocessed uh, rowboats in the hull that I could provide for you. If you prefer. Uh, flying would probably be a bit faster and like easier to dodge lightning bolts. Yeah, not necessarily. If one of those strikes us, we're dead, pretty much. Like on so the spot. You wouldn't, be touch you wouldn't be touching the town. Oh wait, no, that's how that works. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be. <laughs> you, you are the only one. <laughs> well, well, maybe you got to be like more resistant to lightning or something. Well, maybe you should be more resistant to fire. <laughs> I am. Definitely so. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> can't be doubly resistant. Uh, I can. You don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, the, the rowboat is probably safer than flying, to be completely honest. And it's not perfectly safe because you're there floating in the water and, you know, those boats, they always leak a little and there's water and there's water and it's all leaky. But maybe if there's like a, a norlai overhead, to function as a lightning rod, <laughs> it would be safer. <laughs> Possibly. I've also oh, got we're a all way sticking of... together, that's for sure. Yes, I've also got a way of getting us there quickly if we go reboots. I mean, controlling water is the thing that I have. Yeah, and I, 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 I also have it prepared. 
That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> well, you can take a boat, you can fly, you can swim. Uh, take but, it apart. But the Repentless will not get nearer right now. Swimming doesn't seem like a good choice. Let's not do that. We'll take Let's a boat. Swim. We'll take the boat. We'll take the boat. And okay. no, I can fly and take lightning strikes for us. All right. So DJ brings you down into uh, into the guts of the ship and uh, coaxes out a uh, a boat from the walls, from the fleshy walls, and it just sort of like <laughs> slimes down uh, out of it. And uh, fortunately, the, the slime is very good for sliding the boat towards the mouth. The Repentless sets down in the water once more, and uh, the mouth at the front... Uh, begins to open and some seawater comes in and he tells you there's your boat. Let's go. And off we go. Okay. Um, you do have oars to paddle. If you want to take a another method of propulsion, you can. What would you like to do? I will start us battling, just to get us away from the repellent so it can go off where it's going to go. Sure. Okay, uh, you begin to paddle. The repentless, uh, DJ tells you as the mouth closes behind you that the repentless will stay a distance away. Mm -hmm. um, Probably smart. Until it can no longer be uh, horribly scarred by lightning. Uh, very well. Uh, it turns and it begins to um, it begins to move away, and you can see now, especially because you're at you're at sea level, the damage that was done by this uh, this. I mean, not just normal thunderstorm lightning, uh, but you've borne witness to the power of this uh, when you were in Oiho, especially at that condenser uh, in the tower where all the lightning seemed to uh, seem to continue. Um, but the Repentless does uh, boop, 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 go off and away. And Mordecai, you begin rowing. You row, row, row the boat. Yep. All right. Uh, I would like you then to make a uh, constitution saving throw. As you begin to tire from all of the rowing, which is not necessarily a specialty of yours. No, I'm not a strong boy, but I oh. do have that. Okay. I'm determined. Oh, no, so, that's a constitution check. Oh, that's the same card. Same anyway. You're putting your back no. into it. You're battling against the waves. Uh, you're doing a good job. And uh, you're almost to shore. There is an ambient heat now that you're you're very close. It just seems to be radiating off of the volcano itself. And uh, it's, in some some parts, it's causing the seawater to steam and bubble. Uh, but there are definitely places where you would be able to put your rowboat where it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any sort of heated activity going on. Uh, but there's What's a very... Point? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, I was just going to say, it's at but that point I start ditching out everyone's... Uh, Resistance to fire potions. Okay. Who took one? Yep. Because I'm gonna need that. Uh, yep. Sel I'm gonna need that Celine, too. make a medicine check. How many of those did we have? Uh, we had a total of five. Okay. No. Yes. Five. That doesn't divide evenly one. into four. Okay, Norlai doesn't need that. I don't That's really need one, but I'll go that. ahead and I'll go ahead and take one just in case, in case it comes up. I probably don't need one, but we'll see. I have made a bet as a check. All right. Yeah, it is awful, but I made it. <laughs> uh, so with a fifteen, um, there's definitely an acrid smell in the air, and, um. Well, nothing seems to be 
obviously debilitative. Uh, Celine, something to keep in mind uh, would be that if if these gases are leaking out, there's a, a possibility that continued exposure uh, could be a hazard to you all, as these are uh, these are very toxic gases that are pouring out. <sighs> Be wary of noxious gas gas inhalation. Or at a volcano that's active. Right. Are any of you Anyone immune or resistant to poison or being poisoned? Uh given my state, I believe that I am. From what we discussed. Uh yeah, because you're you're a weirdo. Yeah, uh, I believe <laughs> I am immune to the poison condition. And I didn't I didn't prepare that today. Protection from poison. Nope. Yeah, you know, you really should uh, you really should think out your spells then, Mike. You should be glad because I did. You did. Oh. Mm -hmm. Because because just because I don't heal just because I don't, I'm not primarily a healer doesn't mean I don't carry buff spells with me. Uh, bright. Will you roll a nature for me? Okay. Thirteen. Well, the exact the exact uh, chemical compounds or the or just how strong it is uh, are escaping you. Uh, things like this can change over time. But as a uh, you know, as both a wizard who's uh, you know you've studied your books, you've conducted experiments, and uh, maybe in the process of making your own inks or something uh, along those lines, uh, there. Uh, in addition to any of the, the noxious gases, uh, there is, especially down here by the water, um, pools of water that has become very acidic. I mean, this the smell alone, uh, let alone, there's probably a, a, a poor seagull that seems to be singed, uh, and one of its wings is, um, it, it's dead, but one of its wings is dipped in the pool, and it's, it's defeathered. To say the least. Okay. So, acid damage too. Okay. Don't touch the water. Oh, geez. Now we now we need is a blizzard, and we've got the entire uh... the entire Tiamat. <laughs> The entire Tiamat. I remember the last time I saw a Tiamat. I, 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 I remember the last time I saw a Tiamat analog. We were running away from it in a car. That I then proceeded to flip upside down, and we drove <laughs> along the side of a giant fish. Why? Because I'm just that awesome. <laughs> Oh, yep. Cautious is a thing. <clears throat> All right. Well, the uh, the light continues to shine up. Lightning continues to crackle through it. Every once in a while, you all can see that uh, that sparks are uh, are leaving the main sort of tube of lightning and fly out. And uh, a uh, a reminder of uh, their power. Well, I don't know if it's a reminder of their power because it's another uh, it's another seafaring bird uh, ends up falling in a smoking pile in front of you, as apparently it Ooh. must have been flying by and was zapped by a lightning bolt, and it just <laughs> fell down. Oh, oh no! Seems a little excessive to kill the wildlife. She's trying to open a portal to hell. I don't think she can. I don't think the wildlife is her concern. And you also can yeah. see a lot of dead fish floating and kind of bashing up against the wave, the wavy rocks. Well, yeah, but it's you know trying to just make a comment to lighten the mood. <laughs> she's tr she's she's trying to cause an extinction event. Yeah. My thought is not the wildlife either at the moment. 
Well, shall we get going? Yeah. We have enough things to prevent. prevent. That we do. All right. And I suppose we're going to start climbing up where we can to see if we can get to, like, either an interior or to the caldera or something. And this is where you, as a group, can make a choice. You can uh, proceed uh, cautiously, and what we'll do is a skill challenge to get to the summit. Or you can... If you want to fly, you can, but there's an intrinsic hazard that you've seen demonstrated against uh, flying things that do fly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'd also be consuming, presumably, some of your magic uh, in some capacity in order to do this. So, and if there, you can think of it a third option, I'm open to it, but the two obvious choices are slow and steady, and we'll treat this as a skill challenge because you're using your mundane bodies to climb up the volcano, hopefully avoiding fire, poison, acid, and lightning. Uh, or you can sort of rush to the top, uh, expose yourself to you know, the elements that might uh, confront you in that, but... Mm. How far there? away is the top from, from where we are? Uh, jeez. Uh, I'd have to look up uh, various volcano heights. We're probably talking, we're probably talking a couple thousand feet. Okay. Well, I mean, really big volcano can be like if you look at like Mount Rainier, it's like twelve thousand feet above the the plane that it sits on. Okay. But so, that's yeah, a really it, big volcano. Most this, of them are more I, like this five isn't going to be 000. that big, but. It, it's not going to be like, oh yeah, the the summit is two hundred feet up. That, that's the Magnum at Cedar Point. I know what that is. I won't say it's. Uh, I, I I'd say it'd be at least a mile up. So what about uh, fifty eight hundred feet up? Five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long way. Uh, but it's not terribly More steep. You, you actually have kind of a nice, eh, not exactly forty five degree angle climb, but. It's also very craggy and rocky. That helps. Mm, kind of. So, what do we think? Mm. That's a good question. Uh... Well, why don't we start by by walking, and then if we run into insurmountable obstacles, we can always maybe just hop over, over them or, yeah. or, you know, whatever. It's probably going to be the way to go. Save as much as we can. Yeah. We're going to need everything. Maddie, did we have an opportunity for a long rest and new spells while we were on the way, or not did on the that way? Not no. happen. Okay. No, you you all had uh, you had done that the day of the pickup. You had done that. Okay. To get ready to be transported okay. over. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and cast mage armor before we start on the way up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do that as well. And let me just make my roll. Yep. Oh. Oh, good. <laughs> Keeping calm. I'm armored. Yeah. <laughs> Any other uh, buffs Definitely. or Definitely. considerations before you begin your climb? Nope. I think we're ready to start climbing. Got Alrighty. my staff on the ready because I've got less arresto inside it. Yep. I have my slap patch though, I believe. Yes, thank you. Okay. 
Well, I am looking for X amount of successes before Y amount of failures. And uh, we're going to begin the climb. And uh, I'm also going to uh, put in the restriction that the same skill cannot be used more than two times amongst the party. Okay. Uh, but this is also partially narrative. So as I describe you know, the things that you see, or you can ask questions about how to approach something or to advance uh, in some other way, then you can do so. And I'm open to creative uses of uh, skills on your way up. Uh, so the where you're beginning, it's at sea level. I mean, you're a little bit above because the waves aren't like, the water's not gushing over your feet. Uh, there are the acidic pools, there's the dead seagulls, uh, it is it is more level here, but then you're gonna hit. Uh, you know, you're, you're looking at this portion of like hitting the the more vertical part or, or the beginning part of your climb. Uh, the ra the rocks are igneous, uh, dark colored, very craggy, um, which could help. Could also be hazardous because you can cut your hands or dash your head on it. Uh, things along those lines. Rocks fall, people can die. Uh, who knows what lives uh, in or around the, the rocks as well that uh, might not have just been seagulls getting zapped out of the sky. Um, if there's yeah. anything still here. What, what do you mean, is anything here? No, I mean, if anything is still oh, there. Oh, right. Because this, this, is, this is an active volcano. Things, when, when, when volcanoes become active, things normally do the smart thing and leave. <laughs> Uh, so, this is, uh, who would like to do something? Mm, no particular well, we order. We haven't encountered any obstacles yet, so... I wasn't... Uh, just as a note, I have resistance, so I can... I can cast that for you guys. Oh, yeah, that, that can come in handy against things like acid. Hmm... And that's a one one person cast, so you'd be able to add resistance to one person. No, it's um, it's a cantrip. It adds a d4 to a saving throw. Oh. Oh, that's okay. not what I thought it was. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Okay. You have to you would yeah, think uh, protection from energy. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably it. Uh, then for yeah. for prompts. Uh, as to get to the beginning of the climb, uh, you would want to avoid any of these acidic pools, uh, any mm -hmm. of the, uh, any little, like, geysers of, uh, superheated or noxious steam or gases that erupt out of cracks, uh, sporadically. Um, so you're, you're crossing a somewhat flat, craggy, uh, sea level portion to get to the beginning of the climb. So how you want to traverse this uh, dangerous, it, it could be slippery as well because of uh, the, the fish or the water as the tide has gone in and out. Uh, any other sea creatures or seaweed that's here. You could look for a way up. So perception could be something I'd be open to. Uh, some sort of acrobatics uh, to dodge around uh, steam vents. Um, yeah, I think I want to use my acrobatic skill to to try and aid everyone else in avoiding some things very deftly. Okay. Sure. Go ahead and roll. Uh, okay. Well, bam. Hey. Hey, look at that. Nice. As we make our way through the fire swamp, you can just pick someone up and set them aside right before you erupt. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're really small. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because bright's pint size. <laughs> All right, so with Mordecai leading the way, uh, he's able to sort of dance and dodge and help uh, help guide you across this uh, more open area. Um, you know, uh, using his uh, just his, his body rhythms and. You know, use uh, if he sees that there's a pattern, like every three seconds is when there's a burst of something. You use that kind of like a metronome, and he sort of dances around it like he would to a tune. But you all, uh, with Mordecai's help, are able to 
uh, you're all able to cross. And uh, none of you are uh, terribly beat up for the process. Uh, your shoes might be a little warm, but that's nothing, nothing too bad. Uh, all right. So congrats. The climb begins. Uh, or if you don't want to start climbing here, you could begin to explore. You could look for a flatter area to climb. You could go for. You could just start climbing here. You could. Um, um, I don't know. You could search around for a path. Um, but you are at the base. Uh, and you really only have up to go unless you want to start walking around, in, uh, in which case that could be, I don't know, something like a survival even, to uh, to look for clues for, like, oh, if water's flowing here, there might be a cave that could lead somewhere. But I'm, I'm open to this, now that you're at the, the start of your climb. So I'd just like you all to know, I have no skills that will be useful on this, on this, on this climb. Knowledge is I have, be like, useful. one skill. <laughs> I, I don't think my skills are really active. <laughs> well, hmm. I think since, um, this this seems like a good a good place to to try to use nature, to try to figure out where the most likely, uh, oh. where the most likely smoothest path, or easiest path to ascend is, whether it's here or, or whether it would be somewhere else. Sure, go ahead and make a nature. That sounds very reasonable. Okay, um, so yeah, I'll just roll it. Sure, why not? Twenty one. There you go. All right, so you're you're looking at the at the rocks, uh, and while you're not a rock gnome, you've been around enough. Um, you know, you're you're uh, you're analyzing it. You've seen the 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 weathering and wear pattern on them, and uh, you uh, from the the nature of how this volcano has grown up and worn down or been built out, uh, you think you found a pretty a, a pretty solid way up and forward. It doesn't look too hazardous. Uh, it looks, I mean, it'll still be a climb, but it looks more reasonable some other places. Um, and uh, it, because in particular you're using nature, uh, we'll say that this is going to diminish the risk of, like, maybe loose boulders or something along those lines. Something that would be a natural hazard on your climb. Well, so the climb hasn't begun, but you've mitigated perhaps something that could happen in the future. But hey, that's what that's the miners do. Yeah, we're we're here for the unnatural hazards only. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're ready for. <laughs> and Mordecai, Mordecai, just under his breath, you know, as a kind of in character fluff way of him using guidance on most people, is he's just going to be muttering prayers. <laughs> so I'm going to be regularly casting guidance on skill checks. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, Especially because this is a very natural environment. Oh yeah, you're you're getting all like all kinds of elements all coming together and mixing. Um. Okay. Well, we've Nora had acrobatics with a, a nature, Norali or Celine. Would either of you like to do something to further prepare mm -hmm. for the climb or to begin the climb? Do you have anything to prepare the prepare for the climber? In terms of skills, no. I like my thought, my thought would be, could I use animal handling as a way to be like, this is how, you know, this is this space is enough space for a mountain goat to grab up to hop on and get and go, or this this little ledge a snake could get up there. So if you grab it just right. As a as a preparatory, can we um, grab the snake just right? No, it, it, because that would be an awful legend. legend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I would say so, if your companions were more animalistic, 
Or if, like, I don't know, you were, like, riding on a mountain goat and you're sort of, like, guiding it up. Um, but unless you I want to mutate the limbs of, of, your, uh, <laughs> of your friends, um, I wouldn't say that, like, Actually, summoning animal. mountain goats wasn't a bad idea. Okay, That's actually a really mountain. good idea. Yeah, ride up a mountain goats. Do you, do you, you have... Uh, do you I have, have uh, rattles. Do you have like giant goats or something? Can can you can you make giant goats that every that would be big enough for everybody to ride? Because I could ride a regular goat, but probably not everyone else could. Uh, let's see. Yeah, regular goat. Yeah, no, unfortunately, it's a bit too small. There aren't stats for mountain goats, but could we say like the stats of? A war well, horse or something? I know giant goats are a thing for sure. I don't know what book they're in, if it's PHP or Monster Manual, but I know they're but, a thing. Um, but yeah, they're just not on the example list I have. Ah, uh, giant goats. Do we need four? Uh, challenge rating one half. Or lower. Oh wait, it's right here, giant goat. Aha, hold on. So I can summon four giant goats. Are they large? They yeah. are large. Uh, goat has advantage on strength and dexterity saving throws. Gun effects that would knock it down. Which would sleep. include, which would include things like moving from ledge to ledge. Okay, so it has charge, sure-footed, and the action of ram. Okay, do you want to summon your goats? I can summon some goats. All right, roll your 20 for chaos magic as part of this. Again. good. All right. So... Yeah, so I'm like, huh, may, maybe like mountain cats. Uh, now make your make your animal handling. Eighteen. Okay. okay. All right. She summons four mountain goats uh, that don't explode into fireballs on you all, and thankfully, you can each mount up. Exploding goats. This is great. This will keep us from being so tired when we get to the top, too. It's true. Hey, okay, I'm. And so. I'm fine with so you all riding my exhaustion up. mechanics. Riding up with the goats. Yep. And. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Selena, <laughs> you all are on goats. Uh, there is a. Um. Uh, the the climb the climb is beginning uh, as this has been preparatory and sort of safety assurance uh, what would you like to bring on the way forward now the the goats are being uh, calmed or contained from all the uh, from all the acrid smells and the the weird feelings in the air and like you know that you got to make well, sure the ledges are, are where to go what would you like to contribute now that we're actually climbing well the yeah. volcano and Lacuna in general is kind of my stomping ground. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, there's a dragon graveyard. So I'm going to go ahead and I would like to roll a perception to plot a path forward. Sure. You know, roll perception. Under under hangs to yes. Perception. Wow. Oh. That's a twenty-five. All right. The way forward is this way. The the goats are calm, and the the climb begins. Um, and you have made uh, you have made progress. Uh, so as the as the sea level grows uh, more distant underneath you, you come into a, another round of things. Um, the the path forward uh, is uh, I'm gonna carry over the 
the security of the boulders uh, and the uh, like all the buffs that you did in this past one will at least assure less hazards uh, ahead of you. So now for the at least this next part before you'd have to scout again or do any anything along those lines. Now this is just things that will help you advance. This can be about tending the goats. This could be something. Uh, this could be athletics. Uh, to move uh, like a boulder out of the way that would uh, that is um, giving the, the either the, the goats some trouble or boy if you could just like if, if all of you just sort of like lifted this out then the goats could jump up and then get to the next platform uh, this is more of a well, not that you can't perceive but you're receiving the benefits of that right now um, this is more about physical progress and climbing avoiding avoiding hazards um, could be uh, another uh, progress. Like, I'm not going to impose them on you, so if you want to do something to avoid a hazard, I'll count that as climbing as actual like, forward or upward progress instead of just sort of scouting or, or securing your next step because it, that part has already been taken care of. Uh, th this could be, I don't know, if you think of, uh, you can even think of something like, oh, well, uh, th the goat slips, but I... Uh, I dexterously, I mean, if you want to use your second acrobatics, I use acrobatics and I do like a, a spin, which gets the, the goats uh, footing back on track and they sort of like do a, a little, huh, like a little twist and turn on the goats back to uh, get its feet back on the path. That could still be forward progress as well. I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, use that acrobatics for forward sure. progress. Guidance myself. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh yikes! That's unfortunate. That's a big yikes. I know. That's a one. All right. Um. And then there were three goats. So. You uh. Uh the uh your goat Mordecai uh goes for a uh, goes for a jump and uh, just unfortunately despite it being sure-footed it slips and uh, it falls but you do save yourself you are not you are not uh, harmed you're not down any hit points or exhaustion or anything um, but your goat does fall um, what I will say, is uh, this goat is it's not doing the best but it's not dead um, I mean it's a magical being anyway but you get what I'm saying uh, if it, it doesn't exactly go splat on the rocks down below it'll just sort of disappear um, you can halt progress to go get it I mean any of you here you can, like cure it up so it can it can walk again and then make your way back up or you can leave the goat and uh, Mordecai could probably ride with Bright uh, because Bright is I was is thinking smaller. I could double up with Norali because we're the lightest. Yeah. So I, I could still allow you progress with three if, uh, but that would mean if something happens on a Bright or Norali roll it would affect them both. But you could still go without this goat if you don't want to go back down, spend resources and come back up. It would... It seems like a lot of, of trouble to recover the goat, and it's not a real goat. So. Yeah, it could just be dismissed. Okay. I'll I'll take one of the others and Bright and Norlai can double up. Okay. Yeah. Boy, Mordecai, you really have a way of getting my goat. Yes. And you know, yes, I provide I goods for everyone, and you just go and let it fall. It wasn't my fault. I mean, it kind of was. We're climbing a volcano. We're climbing a volcano. I think we have other more pressing issues. We'll just hop on the Norlai's goat. It's fine. Um. All right. Who would like to do something next then? Uh, no, no progress upwards per se, but this was, uh, you know, it wasn't a tragedy for the party. It was for one of the goats that's now injured and left behind, but whatever, it can be snapped and it's gone. We dismissed, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm very open to any other skills, uh, intelligence-based ones. Uh, yeah, I've already uh, used, even I've already used you could be creative nature. with charisma. Oh, hold on. I can use I can use my um, I can use a few charges of my of my staff of the magi to use telekinesis on the goat to bring it back up. Yeah, but then we also have to kill it. it. And I don't think we want to spend a spell slot healing the goat yet. It would almost be better to just recast the goats if we need to. Okay. If we yeah. need to, yeah. If and when yeah. we need to. Um, if, if we need to, it's just an idea. Hmm. Intelligence or getting getting up there with charisma. I mean, there is a way. There is there is always the tried and true classic of uh, intimidating a hazard out of the way. <laughs> if you can explain, <laughs> uh, if you can explain I something, uh, about I think you have how to be a dwarf to do that, don't you? <laughs> uh, I, I I actually have an idea on how I could explain this. It's very simple. I am a cleric of the land. Okay. Are you going to imitate your guts? <laughs> no, it's more a matter of as a as an as an agent of the land's divine will. It should be able to move in my. It should be able to move for my presence, and I'll even take persuasion that I'm persuading. I'm persuading the land to move according to my wishes. And if that is not enough, I actually prepared a spell today that's bad, that's actually terrible, except for situations just like this one. The... And because, and because I get to choo choose them individually for each, I'm going to be spending a third level spell slot. Casting Enhance Ability. I'm taking Charisma. I'm giving Bright Intelligence. Okay. Oh. But, uh, so okay. you 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 have inv advantage on intelligence, intelligence checks, which okay. is any any intelligence based skill. Just in case you pull out another skill, you got advantage on it now. Okay. Great. I'll try to think of a way to use intelligence for this. History. I just can't think of a way to use intelligence. Investigation. <laughs> 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 um. I, I won't say that the land itself will bend to your intimidation, uh, but what I can say, because you've made a little bit of progress up, and you've, you've taken a more gentler slope than most, uh, I'm going to say that there's a lot of, uh, of uh, some seawater iguanas that are on the next sort of ledge that you need to go to, and your goats, your goats are going to refuse to jump because all of the iguanas wanted to escape the boiling acidic water. Uh, and so they've all, like, this this colony of iguanas has clustered uh, on this pl in this area you need to go. Uh, so if you want, you can try to intimidate the iguanas from getting out of your way so that you can continue your your progress ahead. I'm, inti I'm, I'm intimidating them Ooh. iguanas and yeah, you are. with the guidance... That's a 26. Okay. Uh, what do you tell the iguanas? Or just growl or... I don't know, you do the Sean Connery okay. with the seagulls and the, the umbrella on the beach in Indiana Jones, like when you're just flapping the, the umbrella, you know, <laughs> and he get, gets all the seagulls flying away. Yeah, there is, there is, there, there is probably a growl, and as it does, the ground probably rumbles just a little. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And they're like, and they're like oh no, she's in control of the volcano. We gotta leave. All right. <laughs> the animals, they don't know anybody. The iguanas, uh, you growl. The the ground rumbles uh, beneath them, and they all just get their their derpy little flappy legs going as they scatter off. Uh, allowing your ghost to proceed. <laughs> so, so he kind of looks back to the group and just like, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing, Volcano. Great timing. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Norali, right? You've um, continued. Uh, you've you've now jumped onto an uh, a uh, a ledge that was formerly occupied by iguana. It has a lot of iguana poop around, uh, but your goats are sure-footed, so not going to worry about uh, hazard for slipping on that. Iguana poop, or do you mean iguana? Iguana. <laughs> iguana. <laughs> Iguana. 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 Uh, so my my thought is to use history to like re- recall recall some of the things that Mr. Halver had taught taught and something like oh there was this path on the ma- on the volcano that uh, explorers would go go up. Uh, that is absolutely fine. That Mr. Halver would have knowledge if such things exist. Uh, so that makes all the sense in the world. Look at that, 19. And a guidance. Mm-hmm. I'm guidancing everybody. 21. All right. Well, the land is looking favorably on us. Um, yeah, Norlai, now that you, you look around, uh, you see a, a particular landmark. Uh, so it's not exactly a well-developed path, but it's one that uh, a lot more, you know, natural people uh, who are out this way might want to climb. Um... You know, uh, whether they're hermits who just wanted to go and investigate the volcano or whatever. But yeah, you you do remember that, at least for a little while, that there was a path um, that was safer than most. And after all the iguanas fled, you found the rock that was shaped like the whatever that jogged your memory. Um, So you continue ahead. Uh, Bright, what would you like to do to progress up the volcano? Yeah, so this is a volcano that has been a something of a holy site, has it not? For uh, not necessarily, no. No. Okay. I I was under the impression that it was holy to the dragons, but I guess not. Um. Okay. Um. Then in that case, um. This is where the meteor I... struck the mountain chain and destroyed it, but I don't know if that's really holy. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um. So in that case. <clears throat> Since we're searching for Grim Hilder, yes. and we're kind of expecting that she's here before us, mm-hmm. well, maybe not. Um, I would like to try to find a way to use Arcana to look for some kind of trace that she's already been here, and whether that might be like using a a uh, if it were my game, you would be able to use a detect magic. And oh, okay. look for look for like a magic residue with an arcana. If you could combine those two, um, to look for magical residue where someone else might have used a, a spell to pass by or something along those lines. Um, but uh, if that's not uh, not forthcoming, then it would probably have to be uh, something along the lines of. I already used nature. I, I could give you uh, an arcana. It wouldn't make progress up the mountain, but it could give you clues as to what lies ahead. If you want to, it might give you surprise, or it might give you advantage, or just some knowledge that could be useful for. Yeah, like, I'll find. do that. I'll, sure. I'll I'll take that deal. All right. Uh, nineteen plus yeah plus right. plus what twenty. Oh, all right. Um. The, with the, the clues that you've experienced thus far, you have a suspicion that the lava that uh, will be, if not already, is oozing or forming at the top, if it's from Oiho, it's going to share that similar property that you experienced when you were going to the city, where it just seems to be um, overwhelmingly hot. Remember when you had to cross the bridge? And it was dealing, like, it was just dealing damage for being next to it, kind of a thing. You're probably going to find a superheated condition like that up at the top of the vault. Judging from the fact that there's a similar lightning, a similar glow, like, there's just so many similarities that you can link up uh, through just this magical transfer of energy uh, from Oiho manifesting here in, um, in Mesotopia. So there's okay. you're, you're, there's going to be a heat hazard of some variety when you get to the top. That's good to know. 
It's the not a big surprise, but it's good are to know. going to come in handy. Okay, so we're getting up to the top. Oh, and I, I guess, I guess it didn't matter because I rolled higher on the first note. Okay. So, I think it's, uh, I think it's a good idea to just do a really obvious check. Uh, and that is, the next time we come to some kind of climbing obstacle, to just use straight up investigation just to look for the best way around it. Some more progress has been made up. Uh, one, two. That, obviously, that is not going to be uh, exemplary. So we're going to cycle back. Uh, you have been making uh, some decent progress uh, between the four of you. Let's go into another round as we've uh, hit neither threshold for successes nor failures just yet. Um, and progress has been made up the up the mountain. Uh, we'll see if you can button it up this round, or depending on the actions you take, maybe the following one. Depends on how hard you want to push this. Um, but one of you can do something. Oh, I want to do the investigation thing. Oh, you are, yeah, you can do, start out with investigation. Go right into it. I have invest. I have. I have investigatage. Yes. <laughs> Fifteen. I. Okay. A 15, which is an 18. Oh, clearly. Just that one little line connecting the, the top part to the bottom part. I, I missed that at first. So, it's an 8, not a 5. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you're, you're piecing it together, and it's, it's, not, it's not providing uh, a secure route forward. Uh, certainly... You know, you're, you're calculating the angles. You're like, okay, well, I've ridden on the goats for a while, so I, I get a feel for what they're capable of doing. Uh, you have the, you know, whatever the meme of all the calculations going on around your around your head. Um, and you're confident that you can continue, uh, you can continue forward. Uh, though it seems like the trail that uh, that Norlai had found, or it was referenced by her memory of what Mr. Halvar told her. Uh, that that must have crumbled at some point in time. So the the obvious trail uh, or the path up is gone. But there you could still you can still you know if the goats sort of like take a, you know seven feet of running before five, and then you know the the height and then they're averaging etc. Carry the one. But yeah, it looks like you can continue forward uh, with no major hazards that are obviously present. I think I want to do the same with acrobatics one more time. Uh, that one's been used twice already. Has it? Yes. Yeah, it's blessed by you. Did I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. you used yeah, it for the first one. And then you fell off the goat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. You used acrobatics the first time to dance across all the acid pools and the... And the, the oh, okay. And everything. I'm... Hi. And then use your My second one to not fall to your death. So that's cool. I have a I have a blank brain. Um, <laughs> I guess my blank in. before the start of the session. <laughs> it worked really well. Um, let's see. Then. <laughs> I am just awful at everything. Um. Uh, the conditions are it's hot and miserable and windy. Uh, the goats are the goats are aren't afraid, but the goats are I mean, they need guidance. Um, if you trust Bright that there is a path forward, um, there's different things that you can you can look for. Uh, perception's only been used okay. one time. Uh, there's I, I'm open to. Charisma. I kind of want to incorporate performance some way. Performance or persuasion to 
to try and put everybody at ease oh. because when we panic, that's when things get messy and things, you know, get effed. And sure. so try and keep the mood a little calm. Yeah, go ahead and roll performance. And how well you do, I will carry that forward as a bonus to another to another check. So it's, it's not going to be progress, but it will be someone else could do something better to make progress. Maybe even to make even like bigger progress with their, their check. An 18 on performance? Okay. Um, guidance. Oh, that's Ooh, 22. There we go. All right. So you uh, you begin to, to sing a song of reassurance, uh, something that you remember uh, from your past, uh, something that is uh, to embolden uh, the, uh, the, the course to stick with it. You know, like when we get to the top, you know, Norlai, we're, we're going to get your brother back from Grim Hilder. You know, Grim Hilder's going it's down. Over gonna... till it's over. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the song. Um, yep. It's not over till it's over. Um, so what I will do is uh, one of you all uh, can invoke a... Uh, I'll, I'll count that as an advantage on something uh, to move forward as Mordecai is giving a resounding speech forward uh, to support the good guys and to bring down the bad guys. And, aha, uh -huh, Celine is back. Uh, Celine, there is a floating, anyone can use it, but the party has one right now. You can claim advantage uh, before you roll on a skill check, if you wish. Otherwise, you can keep floating that forward. But you are now resolved, thanks to Mordecai. Uh, but I uh, use the second performance check and add on to the song using the flute that I've been practicing for about a year. Because Mordecai hasn't had a chance to hear much of, how much I've improved. Uh, sure. So th this won't be progress up the mountain, but if you want to take a, you no, know, you, you, these are these are successes and failures still. But um, in the narrative, we haven't uh, we haven't gone up the mountain much. But go ahead and roll that. That's fine. I'll allow you to add to this. A 16. Uh, the guidance. 18. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to call that a plus one that someone can add for free, aside from the ones that you have from the Fickle God Papers. So there's an okay. advantage, and there's a plus one floating. Celine? Yes. My apologies for just sorting out some uh, real life things for a moment there. Do what you gotta do. So, we, so we're still making our way up the mountain. Where are we in terms of, uh, of checks right now? Like, what's available? Not acrobatics, not performance. Not acrobatics, not performance. Um. Hmm. Well, I still have access to the to the buff to the charisma because I have because of enhanceability. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to make some progress. Okay. I'm going to see if there's not a, uh, not like a, a small, like a, a str like a strong animal hiding on the, on the side somewhere in like a cave or whatever that I'd like to be able to persuade to push like a, kind of ease up the route by pushing a boulder out of the way. Um, hmm. maybe you could persuade them. The mountain goat you're on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can persuade the mountain goat that I'm on the. And just give it a little nudge. He got this. To nudge the boulder out of the way. Okay, but if you break your goat, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking. We don't have a spare. Uh, all right. Uh, if if there was a way to somehow knock over or uh, crack this boulder. Uh, that there might be uh, there might be a uh, a better or a more direct route up 
Uh, but your your goat with as high up as it is, or maybe it's, it's just not, it doesn't feel comfortable uh, giving it a normal uh, full use of its horns and its uh, strength. But you might be able to um, might be able to talk to it if you want to try and persuade the goat. Um, now I don't know if you want to do this through animal handling. Animal handling would be a much more direct route. But I would. This is a magical goat that is under, you know, sort of a semblance of understanding commands from its creator. So I could see yeah. this working. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'm going to attempt to persuade the goat. And I have advantage due to uh, enhance ability. Okay. Rolling. Twenty-four. Oh. And guidance makes this a twenty-six. All right. Uh, so it takes a little bit of talking, uh, but the goat does. Uh, the the goat does listen to you as you uh, you're speaking for the land here, and you. Uh, I guess you're like the Lorax, you're speaking for the trees. And yep. you, uh, the, the, <laughs> the goat cracks its massive horns against the boulder and headbutts, uh, which uh, in part cracks off a portion and nudges it just enough aside, uh, where it does look like there's a, a more inner path uh, up through a, a crevice on the interior of the rock. So you're not just uh, exposed on the outside, climbing up the, the full outside of this volcano. Um, there, there does seem to be a way uh, shielded on both sides by rocks that you can take now. Ta-da! All right. Stop breaking my goats. Uh, you need just a little bit more progress. Um, you, you are floating some of these uh, skill check boons. You could probably knock it out of the park uh, on this next round, unless you want to do more buffing or other other things. Um, but it is exposing you to more possible failures, so it's up to you if you want to go hard up the up the hill, or if you want to go an easier. But you know, uh, you're measuring risk and reward with the possibility for more failures, because failures are failures. But I'm looking for progress up the mountain to get you there. Um, what would any of you like to do? I would like to use the last animal handling to encourage the goats to get to that. You know. Uh, like this path is directly up. Let's let's just go this way. All right. Uh, sure. So the path to the large goats is going to be squeezing, and it will make them kind of uh, claustrophobic or otherwise have a difficult time trying to get through these uh, these more narrow cracks up to a more open area. So they will need a guiding hand, and animal handling can be just that. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll for it. Uh. I would also like to use the floating advantage and plus one. And guidance. And you get that. Oh, sure. All right. We're, you're blowing all the bonuses. Woo! Oh, hi. And I think it's equal plus one. 26. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, yep. Uh, with, uh, with Noralai's help, you all are able to squeeze your goats through the volcanic path. Um, that's a sentence I've now said in my life. That's interesting. <laughs> um, goats are fluid. <laughs> uh, so, uh, very good. We have made. Uh, we we are close to the uh, close to the tippy top. If maybe one more really good successful moving forward happens, uh, you'll probably. We'll probably reach the, the crest. And you're... Of X amount of failures, they're rather low still, so... Well... We've had one I, failure. I would like one to go ahead sure. and, and and use a perception check to just... Now that we're getting so close, we can just look look around with our, with our ordinary I was gonna say that eyeballs. Too. <laughs> sure. And see if we can... See if we can find the the end of the road uh, alright uh, so the perception I'll give you some information with the perception but it wouldn't be progress up the mountain is that alright okay alright 17 plus, plus d4 yeah. plus 4 21. Nice. 21 bright perceiving ahead now that you're toward the top of the volcano 
you're seeing uh, you're seeing some small things flapping around and uh, they do not seem to be they do not seem to be drawing the attention of the random electrical bolts at least not directly not like other things have uh, but especially with how good you've perceived whatever these little things are like one of them's kind of one of them's kind of like weird it's a it's glowing like at first maybe it was like a, a little bit of fire that uh that like this little boop, little flame or something that might have popped out of a, a bubbling pool of lava but it seems to be flapping around and another one is like a wisp of smoke but it it is it can fly against the direction of the wind uh, but there are little things that uh, don't seem to be uh, like the lightning hits them but it doesn't seem to affect them uh, much if any uh, but you can see these little cre uh, these little critters kind of flapping around at the top. huh it's interesting um could I, could I use stealth to sneak our way past these flapping creatures and get to the top um Well, the, the creatures are... The creatures will be where you would... Where you would be coming out of this uh, crevasse. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say a whole party of four people and three goats. Especially if you... Like, if you alone want to go and to, and to break off from the party and sneak ahead, I'd say yes. Um, so it wouldn't be party progress, but that could get you more info if you want to try and sneak up. I'm just trying to see what we can do to get us to the top. Um, I could, I could do. Do we still have a persuasion? We do still have a persuasion. There is one. I could, yeah, one persuasion. Yeah. I could persuade the ghosts the rest of the way up. Uh, yeah. If, if you want to, if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, you can lend your lend your voice to them as the goats are are still kind of nervous. They're still squished in this crevasse. Oh wow! Look at that. you've blown that out of the water. And guidance, guidance. And just guidance. A, just in case you get a yeah, that's a thirty. Thirty. <laughs> 30. Just a just a straight up thirty. Okay. Well, you all have uh, wiggled and wormed your way up to the top. Um, if you would like to put your, uh, if you'd like to put your tokens down in the in the center middle here, and I guess we'll need three goats as well. Which uh, I'm sure there's something. Uh, library. I think I still have the wrong token. Does it, Mordecai, do you have my token by any chance? Yeah, I can PM it Maddie? too. Well, no, I mean just, like, drag it onto the map. Do you have it in your roll 20? Oh. Uh, do I have it in my roll 20? Yeah, or just Maddie? Uh, I just tried to. I'll try again. There you go. Oh, but that's, 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 um... Oh, um... That's my old token. I have... Like yeah, if you're looking for the new art, hang on. There you go. Okay. And you do have to give control to that, uh... Yeah, you'll have to give control. To that token, to Bright. Is that edit? I can't click edit on it. You have to uh, click on the token. And yeah, then there's and it's a... the little gear. Oh, settings, okay. and then you give uh, control. Yeah. Uh, controlled by... Right. There you go. Okay, yay. And... Let's give... Here's a 
goat. These are large. Here's another goat. <laughs> it's a really disturbing goat. Well, the second one looks kind of like a goat. A little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from behind. And here's another goat. <laughs> <laughs> you can give control of those to uh, to yeah. Dark Wolf if you want to. This way she can move them where she wants to put them. Our party is 60% goat by mass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think by mass is more. I don't have... Uh, I don't know why I don't have... Dark Wolf as a uh, as a controlled by option. Well, hmm. that's really weird. That is very weird. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, that's. Oh, actually, hang on. Is that? Is this one already under your control because it's it's your uh, red cap character? I'm sent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because if these others have, no. have character sheets attached to them, it's not letting me move them. They do have character sheets attached to them. That might be why. You'd have to give the character sheet to to Dark Wolf. Uh, I'm not able to move Crimson oh. though. We could just go uh, add it to the uh, editor and controlled by. Yeah. yeah. Controlled by. Crimson has floating inspiration. Yeah, you you should be yeah. You you should be able to control <laughs> Crimson. Oh, but it was the other two that we need to uh, revert control to. I I can't move Crimson. That's what I was saying. Oh weird. And Fluffy can't move uh can't move Pearl. Even though it can be edited and controlled by. Weird. Maybe it's because you put the token down. Yeah, when, oh. when the DM drags a token, it just oh, adds never. To, All right, changes the behavior. Okay. Then y'all, you can drag your token out. Uh, in which case, Mordecai, you control Jasper, right? You want to just bring Jasper out as your goat? Uh, I could... Or tanker that would, that would still be something that you would have to give control of to Dark Wolf. Oh. Okay. So, well, I think you have uh, and still have to resize them. Yeah. I can just summon three crimsons. Oh, sure. Put three but, uh, crimsons on the board, yeah. Just have to resize them to large. Very right. handsome, man. There we go. <laughs> and before we go into this combat, just want to make sure that we are level sixteen, correct? Yes, you are sixteen. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I, I didn't, I didn't update my hit points, so I'm going to go ahead and update my hit points. <laughs> that seems, that seems really timely. <laughs> yeah. It's rather appropriate to do at this moment. And fire resistant potion is getting downed as we're approaching the top. Mm -hmm. Yep. So y'all are on goats. So let's do this. We're gonna have you approach from the side. You can, this isn't like terribly difficult to climb over, especially not on goats. But this will give you some not starting right next to the lava space. I just there. Uh, give them a mark to differentiate. Yeah, differentiate the different ones. Yep. Mm. Red, green, and blue. How many hit points do the goats have? Uh, 19. Okay. So, like, I'm not gonna see. Oh. It's 18 more than Peggy Sue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess you get booped and she she's poofed. 
as you as you emerge from the crevasse, you are uh, you are going to see the what's some bobbers that were flying around. And they seem to be just kind of everywhere. Uh, they're, they're not too... They don't seem to mind the heat either. These might be denizens of Oiho who don't worry about such things. Uh, but they are just little... Little, like, smoky bat people. Uh, just sort of flitting around. And then there's ones that look like... Just like little fireballs, um, uh, although not necessarily like burning fire, they they do appear almost like a, a magma bubble, just kind of, but it, it didn't pop. It just kind of kept floating up. Um, a vaguely, vaguely humanoid shape, um, but they're just little like magma bubbles that are blooping around, and the whole place seems to be filled with uh, these things that are. It's kind of looking around, uh, lazily, uh, lazily doing whatever it is that they're doing. Um, now there, while there wasn't an element of, uh, of stealth, uh, they do notice you, but they also don't seem to care. Um, one of them kind of just flo floats over and... Gives you a sideways look, and kind of gives a little shrug as its as its uh, hot body just sort of like continues to like boil and bubble and hiss. Um, but it doesn't come screaming over in your direction. It just sort of, eh, whatever. Uh, you also see. Uh, you don't immediately see over this ridge, uh, but you can see across uh, across here, and you from this distance you are feeling the heat, uh, but you aren't going to be exposed to any sort of mechanical dangers until you are uh, on the uh, on the edge or crossing over. Uh, there are some rock pillars, and at the top of some sort of raised, uh, it, it almost looks like the the, uh, a place where you landed when you first arrived in Oiho. Sort of a raised uh, pedestal uh, with stairs coming down. Uh, you see uh, two figures. <coughs> that way. Mm. Uh, doing or saying something, but there is some whipping winds. Uh, you're not deafened, as per the mechanic, but if you want to communicate over the bubbling magma and the wind, uh, there is going to be a, uh, you, like, you'll have to shout or use uh, psychic communication uh, because it is noisy up here. Uh, it is windy in case physical projectiles would ever come into play. Uh, so you'd have to correct for that or um, we'd have to work with that. And then uh, the lava is coming from somewhere down below and does appear to be going over the edge uh, further down into another part of the of the crater that would have been buried from the, the far side. And there's a series of fires over on a ledge here uh, that have uh, some... Or th that lead on a, a manufactured path leading to a sealed door, uh, which is, as you see, is flanked by this uh, odd uh, this odd crystal and these very hellish, familiar-looking trees from Oiho. Uh, but the door does appear to be closed. Um, the sky is orange in reflection of the light in this uh, this uh, this hellish substance. I mean, lava would be mundane, uh, but this, as bright as presuming, has a more supernatural quality to it. It's super lava, and there is lightning that does streak up. Uh, especially now at the top, there's lightning that dances among these little floating things. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect them much, if at all. Um, they don't seem to care. They're rather impassive about this. And um, uh, every so often, the beam 
intensifies, uh, creating a bright light, not a mechanically detrimental one, at least none of you have bright light uh, as a detriment uh, to your, yourselves. Um, but there are flashes of very bright light as some sort of pulsing energy from underneath this uh, this liquid hot magma is uh, rousing. Uh, what we're going to do real quick with this description, and if you have any other questions about what you see or the battlefield conditions, I'll answer them. But at least I need to get up and use the restroom real quick, and then we can continue as these two are at some sort of altar doing something, and you all have uh, have come up and are uh, unnoticed by them. Uh, you were noticed uh, unnoticed by the two figures on the altar, though you have been noticed by the little critters. But again, what do they care? Fair and passive. Yeah. So everyone, uh, we'll be right back. Um, I, I'm gonna get a drink uh, as well. I don't think this will be a 15 minute long one. If you all, if you all are good for like five, no more than 10 minutes, then we'll continue things forward. Is that Maybe all right? Maybe 10 you? minutes. 10. All right, we'll be back in 10 minutes. I have 11:12, so let's say we'll, we'll be back at 11:25. And uh, for any of you out there as well, uh, if you have any bits or re-up your subscription or whatever. Uh, give it a try on this screen because uh, Bright's Cupcake has a special surprise. I hope you enjoy it.